Hi everyone, welcome back to the Halifax 57 Rescue Show. And uh, we've got some interesting, uh, a mini adventure, a road trip uh, to show you now. And uh, uh, we appreciate you guys following us and uh, we're doing all kinds of uh, weird and wonderful things. And uh, uh, just last week, Pratt & Whitney Canada who have a factory uh, engine production plant in Lethbridge, Alberta, they were having their 32nd anniversary. This is plant 32. So it's a numbers game. Plant 32 of Pratt & Whitney in Lethbridge, they were having their 32nd anniversary. So all the employees came out to a, a family picnic and they said, Carl, could you and your lads come down with a, the Halifax bomber engine on the yellow trailer? And could you run for us for noisy entertainment for the uh, employees of Pratt & Whitney? And Pratt & Whitney has decided to support us, sponsor us at Bomber Command Museum. They're re helping us rebuild the Harvard a World War II trainer to running condition. They're uh, providing financial support. So this is a wonderful uh, getting together. And here you've got an American and Canadian engine company that believes in us and the things that we're doing for our veterans and for saving history. So it was a wonderful invitation. Uh, they paid all our expenses. And uh, we even got some Pratt & Whitney birthday cake out of it. So that was fun after the engine run. But uh, here, see this adventure, a road trip of myself, Hugh, and Bob headed down to Lethbridge to convert gasoline to noise in a Bristol Hercules engine. Let's have a look. We're just going to demo this sleeve valve unit from the back of the truck, you know, so that the uh, Pratt Whitney engineers can understand how this baby works. for inviting us down from Bomber Command Museum. <laughs> I'm sure you all know of the great history of Pratt Whitney. You've lived it. Remember the WASP engine built by Pratt Whitney? They built 32,000. Twin WASP, the R2800, built by Pratt Whitney, powered the P-47 Thunderbolts and the F-4U Corsairs, and a whole bunch of other bombers, the R-2800 by Pratt Whitney. So you guys have a great heritage. We want to tell you about this engine. This is Canadian as you can get. This is an engine called a Bristol Hercules, and the Canadians did 43,000 combat missions in World War II, and this engine powered 70% of those combat missions, mostly in the Halifax bomber. But this engine was in the Stirling bomber and the Wellington bomber. So it's a very important engine to our freedom, just like the Wasp and the Twin Wasp of Pratt Whitney. We keep these engines alive because we're building a Halifax bomber. If we keep the engines alive, we keep our veterans' memory alive. 10,800 Canadians killed in bombers in World War II. 70% of them were flying this engine in their Halifax bomber. So 
just so you've got the background history, we'll run this for about 10, 12 minutes for you. This is a special design engine. After the run is over, we can show all you gearheads how does a British sleeve valve engine work. So with me today is Hugh and Bob, and we're all part of the Bomber Command Museum, fixing engines, airplanes, it's our tribute. But thank you, Brett Whitney, for inviting us down, and let's convert some gasoline to noise for you. Masters on. Yeah. On. Okay, my oil's coming on. Another oil here? No, that's fuel. Uh, not yet, not yet. Okay, set throttle 22. Whoa, back a little. Right there. This way a little bit. Yeah, right there. Let's try that. Okay, we got 30 pounds fuel pressure. Clear prop. Around the other side, see those other two back there? That's where it breathes in. That's where it takes the If you come around and watch this, where it gets all its horsepower is that sleeve valve is the burning chamber. And when the ports line up perfectly is when it breathes in and breathes out. It has no poppet valves like the boss and a crack with it. This is a British invention. That back up everything. So that's what he is doing while he is running. You might hear it drop a bit. He'll kill the one mag to see what happens. Well, this is the kill the other mag to see if they're both dropping about the same amount. Yep. Well, some of that is so damaged. The main reason of it is the sleeve out Yeah. So the outside of that sleeve has got it kept pretty, pretty well oiled. Uh, the inside. War is over and victory is assured. Which airplane do, do they remember? One from 1942, 43, and 44? Or the one from 1945? So it's kind of like two sisters. One sister gets the glory, but the other sister did all the work. So that's that's the way. Yeah. So we've got 12 of these engines now. Like we bought and traded 12 more planes. We need four runners. Well, there you go. A nice little adventure uh, making a noise for all the crowd at Pratt & Whitney. Uh, factory in Lethbridge. It was lots of fun that day. And uh, so we're, uh, we want to thank Ken Cook, our videographer at the museum who traveled with us to Lethbridge and caught this adventure uh, on film. That's why we're able to share it with you now. Ken's been doing great work. We're gonna continue to work with him. And uh, uh, I wanted to tell you about something uh, big that's coming up. Over the past three or four years, we've gathered three or four tons of Halifax parts uh, from in England, from all over the uh, British Isles, and we've got them all stored in one spot. We've got a 20-foot shipping container. Everything is in there, and we're going to be over there loading the container, getting everything ready to ship. We'll ship it over by uh, uh, ocean liner 
to the Port of Montreal, and then the container will be delivered to uh, the Arne Pryor rebuild shop for the Halifax project. So we did our shopping, we've got our goodies, and now we have to deliver. And uh, it will happen in the coming weeks, and we'll share all that with you as the parts arrive in Canada. But let's get down to brass tacks, folks. Uh, I'm going to spend when I'm in England ten or twelve thousand dollars Canadian to do all of this, and I don't know if you folks think this is a worthy project or not. But we need your help. We're getting low on funds after I spend all this money in England getting the shipment ready. So anything, fifty dollars, a hundred dollars, whatever you could spare, uh, you know where to send it in fundraiser 417498 and we really need your help to continue the project uh halifax parts don't grow on trees we've got them but we need to get them to canada so we hope you'll help uh the interest the uh, enthusiasm to uh, follow our shows subscribe to share with your friends and family it's greatly appreciated. And uh, what we'll be doing in the weeks ahead, we will share it all with you. Uh, you'll be with us all the way. And so we just wanted to say thank you to all of our supporters and sponsors. Let's keep rolling. And uh, we're saving history. We're making history. And remember, we leave no Halifax behind. See you next week. Bye-bye.